before oh, we go to Salt Utah. Lake City. I'm excited about very, Utah. Why? Because we got some triple threat go things going on. We'll discuss it later. No big deal. Yeah, you and me on the slopes. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah. it. Ooh. All right, we are headed to All-Star Weekend, but one would have thought that it was going to be an All-Star packed matchup last night when you saw that it was going to be the Celtics and the Bucks, but it wasn't Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart that faced off against the Bucks' big three. Uh, it was multiple starters that were out for the Celtics. So can I interest you in some Derek White? Some, yes. Some Malcolm Brogdon. Crushing it. Some Sam Hauser. Hauser. Shoot like he did last night, we yes. We weren't even picturing Mike Mascala, who's been, that's my, my, that's my guy now. Guy. Uh -oh. uh, Drew Holiday, though, <laughs> he was on fire. So this is the final s seconds of the third quarter. I mean, that was a premonition, Richard, of what would be to come. Yeah, no, look, it, the Bucks. It took every ounce of yep. what they had to keep the streak alive. Mm. That's what it was more about. This win versus Boston was a big deal, but it was that streak that was impressive. And you see them fighting against an undermanned Boston team. This is purely a compliment to their depth, and I think people now have a much better understanding of it. Well, and then the final seconds here in the fourth quarter, the Celtics. Why did you foul? Up. Oh, my goodness. Why didn't you foul? Now, that's a tough shot. And Pretty the good defense. It's yeah. great defense. It's a tough shot. But also, sometimes you're like, well, they don't have anybody that can hit that type of tough shot. But yeah, Sam Hauser can hit that shot. Sam Hauser so can. Now tough. they know. Over time, we go. This is the start of OT. Derek White driving. He gets that one to go. And then the next possession. What did I say? Derek, can I interest you in some Derek yeah. White? This is why, Richard. You, listen, man, when you have White on your side, anything is possible. It is possible for this man to crush things. But there we go. There's Drew that man. Holiday. Drew Holiday. He I has 40 points, Ooh. career high, eight threes for Holiday, including this one right here. Absolutely impressive for the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks go on to win this one, 131-125. The final seconds here, just for good measure, making sure that they get the wing. So I, I mentioned this was a first. It was a big night for both Giannis and Drew Holiday. You can see they combined to score 76 Ooh. points. That's the most they've combined for in a game since Holiday joined the Bucks in 2020. So pretty impressive. They were clicking on all cylinders. Richard first. Please, please tell me what's going on on on, on, on your feet. It's, it's casual Friday. It's definitely Wednesday. Oh, well, first of all, first of all, no, these are, these are like the Gucci mullets, you know, business in the front, party in the back. <laughs> <laughs> the Gucci You've never seen the Gucci You're welcome, before, Gucci. ladies and gentlemen. That, you're welcome, that's man. what we're calling this man. Now. Riz on a thousand right now. I, I want to break down these more, but I do want to get your thoughts on the final th game winning three for Drew Holiday. So let's gear that up first. Let's pop it up. And we're going to see look, the ball movement of Milwaukee Bucks. Not only are they talented. Look, you got the ball in Giannis's hands. You know what he's trying to do. Great screen. You don't want to slip out of the screen. You want to set the screen. Give him a little bit of room. Now you got two on one. Mm. The most underrated part of Giannis's game probably. It's still his passing. He is a willing passer. Ball movement. I love the relocation, though, by Drew Holiday. He went from the paint back out to the three, found an open spot. And when his teammates are looking for him, it is a special, special system that they run. There's some business in the front party in the back for them, too. Yeah, heck yeah. yeah I like yeah. it. I you like you? That. Okay, great. I'm glad you like the Gucci mullets. So, okay, they're coming back. Oh, boy. The mullets? Are coming back? No, Gucci Are you going to grow Gucci. one? No, I can't grow. I could grow the back part. Uh, so that was a matchup between the top two teams in the East. And tonight on ESPN, we have the third seated Sixers, the fourth seated Cavaliers. Tim Bontemps, you are at the Wells Fargo Center. Take us inside the mindset of those two teams as we head towards the All-Star break here. Well, Philadelphia, or for Philadelphia, Malika, and for Joel Embiid in particular, it's about getting some time off. Now, he is questionable again tonight with left foot soreness. The same thing he's been questionable on the injury report for for the past several games over the past several weeks. And while Embiid has kept playing through it, and I assume he's going to play tonight in this ESPN game against Jared Allen and the Cleveland Cavaliers, he is ready to get some time off and to rest that foot. He said multiple times that rest is the only thing that's going to help it, something that's been a nagging thing for him. And he's obviously you know, tied for with Luka Doncic for the NBA's lead in the scoring race for a second straight year. He's going for MVP again. He's obviously playing at a very high level, but he could certainly use that break, and I know he's looking forward to getting that over the next several days. Bunch of sit around being a city for the All-Star game. As for the Cleveland Cavaliers, Malika, I think this is an opportunity for them to show that this is not a three-team race atop the Eastern Conference. We talk about the Celtics. We talk about the Bucks. We obviously talk about the Sixers. The Cavs have the best net rating, though, in the NBA over the past 15 games. They're outscoring opponents by 9.9 points per 100 possessions, way ahead of teams like Milwaukee, Boston, 
Denver. They have been the best team in the league over that stretch. They come in here tonight and beat the Sixers on the road. I think it sends a message not only that they would tie Philly in the standings, but that you have to look at them, especially with Brooklyn losing Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, right. as a legitimate four team atop the conference that you could expect to advance and win a series. It certainly seems like heading into the All-Star break, in the East at least, it feels like it's a top four, and then it feels like there's everybody else. The Celtics, they now lead the Bucks by only a half Ooh. game. That's after last night. And then the Sixers and Cavs, they are also within striking distance. But what are the biggest questions for these four teams with less than 25 games to go, which is a little bit wild that we're already at that point in the season. Welcoming in ESPN senior writer Zach Lowe for this conversation. So, Zach, I want to start with the fourth-seeded Cavaliers here. When you're looking at them, what is the biggest obstacle between them and getting out of the Eastern Conference? Well, the biggest obstacles are the teams above them in the standings and how awesome they are. But if there's one question I have about the Cavs, it's can they score enough against the best defensive teams in the NBA. They have the best defense in the NBA. That's legit. That's not going anywhere. But they start two big men who are non-shooters and a third wing in Isaac Okoro, who is a shaky shooter and defenses ignore him. But in the last month or so, they've started to answer that question. They're sneakily up to 10 in points per possession. And if they hang there, and if those two guards, Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland, continue to do the spectacular, and Evan Mobley and Jared Allen develop and develop and develop, maybe this offense that looked like it might be kind of not ready for prime time mm. in the playoffs, they're starting to look like they might be ready to push these guys harder than we thought. Tenth, that's legit. Top yeah. ten offense. That, that's impressive. I'll take the Sixers. For me, when I when I look at the 76ers, it's just, do they have enough, right? Because James Harden is no longer the 35-point-per-game triple-double monster that we've seen from him in the past, nor does he need to be. He actually leads the league in assists. Joel Embiid, on any given night, he can be the best player on the floor, even when he's going up against Giannis Antetokounmpo, even when he's going up against Jason Tatum. But when you look down the roster, where's the rest of that scoring going to come from? Is it going to come from James Harden? Is it going to come from Tyrese Maxey, who has been excellent, but a little bit up and down as of late? And so... When you think about Boston and Milwaukee, who I just have the utmost confidence in, it's can they crack and can they be, we talk about them in the upper echelon, can they get up there? And I just don't know whether or not they have enough. Richard, I, I guess we'll keep it moving in the standings. For the Bucs, what, what's the biggest question for them? Well, it's the health. Uh, like, I, I think that's the number one thing. I think even if you look at the people that they brought in, I love the Joe Ingles addition. I love the Jay Crowder addition. They've added depth on the wing in an area in which they need it. When you saw Chris Middleton, one last year, you were like, okay, Chris Middleton was injured. That's why we lost the Boston in seven. Well, Boston's better. And then you go this year, and Chris Middleton has been banged up all year long, right. hasn't played much, so you're like, oh, it's not like they started the season, kept going. And then the last part when you look at how much more Giannis has had to do over the course of this season because Drew Holiday has been in and out, because Chris Middleton has missed a substantial amount of time, that's the one thing. If the Bucks are healthy and they are rolling, that to me is going to be very difficult, especially because they added depth in the mm -hmm. positions in which they needed it most. I still like the Bucks a yeah. lot. Uh, Ramona, how about the reigning Eastern Conference champions? Well, they've got to, because the Bucks are so good, they're going to have to play their guys more than they probably want to down the stretch to hold on to that one seed. Jason Tatum sat out of last night's game. They called it a non-COVID illness. He told me he said he had a really bad stomach bug. He was throwing up in and out of bed the last couple of days. He's going to get some rest here. They didn't, he didn't even make the flight to Milwaukee. He's going to get some rest here. But one of the big issues for him last year, he ran out of gas in the finals. And he trained really hard in the summer to yep. make sure that he's fresh for, for the playoffs. But he has to go against his nature because he wants to play every night. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have to restrain him while they're also in a race for the top seed with the Bucks. So, Zach, when you look at all of those questions that we just posed, the Cavs offense, yep. the Sixers have a knock, the Bucks health, Jason Tatum if he's fresh enough, which one to you is the biggest question mark of all those four? Oh, it's got to be the Sixers. <laughs> it's got to be the Sixers because I said it before, they should be insulted by the way we all talk about the Eastern Conference mm. as Boston, Milwaukee, and then a gap between everybody else. They have an MVP candidate in yep. Joel Embiid, a guy who should have made the all-star team in James Harden. They are not a weak sister. They should be the championship contenders like Boston and Milwaukee, except, except we know what's happened to James Harden in the very biggest yep. games. Joel Embiid's had some injuries in the playoffs, and he's actually not 
performed up to his regular season level in some playoff series? Those are the questions that will remain unanswered until they answer them on the biggest stages. And with Harden headed into free agency this summer, potentially, yeah. the pressure is on to answer them now for Philly. Rich. No, no, I agree. For me, the biggest question, and I know we were having this conversation uh, uh, off camera before the show, and it was like the thing about the Cavs is in we're talking about this top four, and Donovan Mitchell has been outstanding this year. Their young core. I think Donovan Mitchell is the oldest one at 26, 27. So they have multiple years to get better. But in none of these series would Donovan Mitchell be the best player on the floor, mm. right? If you're talking about Celtics, you're probably talking about Jason Tatum. If you're talking about the Bucks, you're talking about Giannis. If you're talking about Philly, you're talking about Embiid. So the, the Cavaliers would enter into any one of these series, even if they're able to win, they would never have the best player. Now, they might have two, three, and four. Right. They might have two and three but they would not have the best player in the series and to me that's tough to win a championship or to get really deep and never have that guy and now Donovan Mitchell is that guy I'm just going right up on his I'm, just, I'm going I, I, Donovan <laughs> you that guy I'm just material. saying of those guys <laughs> right. you would say that well, those are the MVP candidates right now because at the end of the day not only do you need usually one mm -hmm. superstar to win but in today's day and age you need multiple superstars Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.